Extremely shocking reports still streaming in this Monday morning have shocked Kenyans beyond words. A helicopter belonging to Deputy President William Samoy Ruto crashed into Rukana while in the process of taking off. All five occupants were killed. Yeah, and this includes the pilot, a Kenyan by the name of Captain Mario Magonga and four American nationals. The exact time of the crash yeah, is not really known because there are conflicting reports as to what time exactly it happened. And there's a very good reason why somebody would not want to tell yeah, exactly what time the crash happened yeah, or to cook or adjust the time that it occurred, which I'll deal with in a minute. But it is safe to say that it occurred in the early hours of Monday morning. That's any time between midnight on Sunday and uh, Monday morning, 4th of March, 2019. Now, fascinatingly, <laughs> there's something here. Helicopters ordinarily are not allowed to fly at night unless yeah, they have the special instruments required for night flying of choppers. And it gets even more interesting. Only the Kenya Defense Forces yeah, and the Kenya Police usually have choppers with the night vision capabilities. So it is very rare yeah, for a chopper outside these jurisdictions, yeah, not owned by any of these two organizations, to have night flying capabilities. However, the Deputy President's chopper, the one that went down, killing the five people, had those capabilities. An interesting aside here is that a normal helicopter, yeah, without any special capabilities, is worth about Kenya shillings 871 million. And therefore, for a chopper with night vision capabilities, we are talking 1 billion Kenyan shillings plus yeah, over a billion Kenya shillings. Now, according to former vice chair of the Jubilee Party, Bwana David Morade, the deputy president has several choppers yeah, he owns which are parked at the Wilson Airport. Now, we are told about the fateful accident that the people being flown were tourists. And the Lake Turkana Central Island, where this particular accident happened, is indeed a tourist attraction. However, the immediate question one may want to ask is why were tourists flying at night? That, my friends, is a very nagging question. But there's much more. Initial reports say that actually there were two choppers. Yeah, and the first one took off successfully and uh, arrived in Nairobi. But this second one, unfortunately, tried to take off, yeah, failed to take off successfully, and crashed and killed all the occupants. This would suggest that the other chopper also had night flying, yeah, night vision capabilities. And so, <laughs> the immediate question is, was this other helicopter also a helicopter belonging to the deputy president? Or was it a helicopter belonging to KDF? Or was it a helicopter belonging to the Kenya Police Service? Now, the pilot of the ill-fated chopper was a Captain Mario Magonga, who is said to be a cousin to the Kitutu Chache legislator, Richard Onyonka, whose first statement is very instructive. The MP has called for speedy investigations into the accident. Why did it happen? How did it happen? What caused it? Now, knowing our country, Kenya, it's very, very unlikely that we will get answers yeah, to most of these questions we have posed yeah, surrounding this very unfortunate accident. So, for a minute, let us deal with what we know for sure. Yeah? Now, the Central Island National Park, where the accident occurred, is widely known as the gem of Lake Turkana. The park is managed 
by the Kenya Wildlife Services, KWS. And the big tourist attractions here are the crocodiles, yeah, the huge Nile crocodiles. Yeah, there's quite a large population here. Uh, there are also hippos and of course bats. But by far the largest tourist attraction are the crocodiles, yeah, which incidentally normally breed on the shores of the island between the months of April and May. Because of its remoteness, yeah, the best and uh, most favored way to access the national park is by air. And we have two all-weather airstrips yeah, that are on the island yeah, that uh, visitors normally use. Because if you are to decide to access this particular tourist attraction by road, it would take, wait for this one, three days journey from Nairobi. You would have to travel from Nairobi via Masabet and then on to North Hall yeah, before you reach the park. Or alternatively, from Masabit you go to Maralal and then South Hall and then you access the national park. Now, because the aircraft belongs to Deputy President William Samoy Ruto, there are all kinds of political uh, murmurings and whispers. Yeah? And we shall deal with that immediately after the very brief upcoming commercial break. Don't even think of going away. Welcome back. Now, I don't ever remember in the history of our country an accident which has happened yeah, and then shortly, so shortly after the accident, in fact immediately after the accident, people start murmuring and spreading rumors. Usually, after something like this happens, there's a lull, yeah, as people soak in the shock, yeah, before people start talking. And it gets even more disturbing when these people who are doing the most talking are members of parliament. And members of parliament from the Rift Valley. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, what people are suggesting, yeah, what these people are suggesting is that this was no ordinary accident. What they're in fact saying is that this was an assassination. What? Now, of course, any security expert will tell you this is extremely far fetched, yeah, this particular allegation, or shall we just call it a rumor? Why? It is far fetched. And by the way, far-fetched does not mean it is impossible. Yeah, it is far-fetched means it is highly unlikely. Yeah. Why would somebody want to assassinate a helicopter pilot? What would the motive possibly be? And number two, how evil would this person be? Yeah, that in their assassination attempt, they decide to take with them other innocent passengers in the said helicopter. Now, of course, this is a highly sensitive issue, yeah, and uh, I've posted this particular video in Club 1999, and I've included notes, yeah, where I've discussed at length, yeah, these highly sensitive issues associated with the chopper crash, yeah, including latest inside information I have received, yeah, which I'm sorry is just way too sensitive for me to, to discuss on an open channel. A public channel like this one. However, it's very easy to be a member of Club 1999. Yeah, you can see all the details you need on your screens right now. All you need to do is send a blank email to that email address. Yeah, and you will not be included in any mailing list to be disturbed. Yeah, we don't send spam out at all. All that will happen is that you'll receive an immediate response. Yeah, telling you exactly what you need to do to join Club 1999. So that you'll not only be able to access this latest information, but you'll also be able to catch up on a lot of other information, including yeah, 37 highly sensitive videos that I've made. Yeah, videos that you've missed in the club. You'll be able to get them immediately become a member. So I suggest you get down to it straight away. Now, we're in a very sensitive situation in our country called Kenya right now. Times have never 
been this sensitive. Times have never been this dangerous. There seems to be an open revolt yeah, from uh, MPs in Rift Valley, especially those allied, closely allied to the Deputy President. In the last few hours, in the last couple of hours, they have escalated their attacks towards the President of the Republic of Kenya, Uru Kenyatta. And therefore, when an accident like this one happens, when things are so tense in the country, <laughs> it becomes extremely scary. This is the worst of times for anybody to spread unverified rumors. Granted, as I mentioned in the first part of this video, there are a lot of question marks surrounding this uh, particular helicopter crash. The most nagging being, helicopters do not ordinarily fly at night, and there are very few helicopters equipped to fly at night, and mostly, they belong to our security services, the KDF and the Kenya police. Initial reports say this one was equipped to fly at night and it belonged to the deputy president. Still, despite all the nagging questions, this is not the time to spread unverified rumors. This is not the time to speculate yeah, when the country is in such a precarious situation. And so, the immediate question would be, is this deliberate? Is there a motive and an objective behind all this? We wait to see. Of course, this is something which has just happened, and therefore it's still a developing story in its early stages. So wait to see how it develops, and of course I'll keep you very much updated. But of course you can get a head start yeah, by getting some of the inside information uh, that I've mentioned which is available in Club 1989. But what is emerging from all this, it seems that the response from MPs in the Rift Valley is preemptive. To preempt what? To preempt the arrests yeah, of corrupt people that has been promised. It would seem to me, yeah, and indeed to many keen observers of the Kenyan situation, that some people want to turn it into a political thing, even before the criminal arrests are made. Yeah, you know that somebody is going to be arrested for a criminal offense, and therefore you start making political noise, yeah, so that you label the whole thing political. And meanwhile, the people who suffer most are the long-suffering people of Kenya, who are just sick and fed up of corruption in our country. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.